Today is the last Sunday before Christmas. That is the fourth Sunday of Advent. That means Mary is still pregnant. And the Gospel passage today tells us the story of the pregnant Mary visiting her cousin Elizabeth, who is also pregnant. Mary received the visit from the angel Gabriel, who told her she was going to become the mother of Jesus, the Lord. And in addition to that, the angel informed her that her cousin Elizabeth, who was already past the age of giving birth, was six months pregnant. And Mary immediately went in haste to visit Elizabeth, a journey of about 90 miles. Jesus was born once upon a time, but Jesus wants to be born every day, not only by Mary, but by all of us who are Christians. So, today, Mary is not the only one pregnant. All of us who are Christians are expected to be pregnant with Jesus. But how do you know, as a Christian, if you have Jesus in you? You look at Mary. She got the news that she was already carrying Jesus in her. And she got the news that her cousin Elizabeth was pregnant. And she forgot about herself and went in haste to go help her older cousin. So you know if you, that you have Jesus in you if, like Mary, you are always in haste to go help those that you are stronger than, those that you are more endowed than. Mary was younger. She was more youthful. She had more strength, and so she went to help the older one. As Catholics, when we receive Jesus Christ at Mass in Holy Communion, at the end of the Mass, when the priest or the deacon says, Go in peace. The message is, like Mary, who had Jesus in her and went in haste to help the, sister, the cousin, Elizabeth, so also, as Catholics, Having received Jesus, we are to go in haste after Mass to show love to others, to offer help to others. And when Mary arrived, Elizabeth exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and who am I to be visited by the mother of my Lord? When I read those words, I wondered, Elizabeth, how did you know that Mary was the mother of the Lord? Who gave you the information? Because physically there was nothing different about Mary. There was nothing written on her forehead that she was the mother of the Lord. She came like any normal human being. Yet Elizabeth recognized in her the mother of the Lord. I wondered, at that time, Mary had no WhatsApp, Mary had no Instagram, Mary had no Facebook. For us to have thought that maybe as soon as the angel Gabriel gave her the news, she changed her status. So how did Elizabeth get the information? And then I read a few words before Elizabeth began to speak. It says, filled with the Holy Spirit. So, there is the key. The Holy Spirit that filled Elizabeth made Elizabeth to recognize what was unique in Mary. For us who are Catholics, sometimes we get mad when our separated brethren, other Christians, or even non-Christians do not recognize in Mary what we recognize in Mary. When we find people who do, not, who do not respect or reverence Mary like we do, we get mad. But I've realized that that is not the right attitude. 
because Elizabeth was able to recognize what was unique in Mary, not by flesh and blood, but by the Holy Spirit that filled her. And so if as Catholics, we are filled by the Holy Spirit to recognize in Mary what is special about her. And we find others who lack the Holy Spirit and as such do not recognize in Mary her special position. Our reaction should be that of prayer. We should pray for them that God may fill them with the same Holy Spirit that has endowed us to recognize in Mary what is special in her. For with physical eyes, one would not be able to see what is special in Mary. What we celebrate in this season, the birth of Jesus, was prophesied many years before it happened. In today's Gospel passage, we have it happening, but before it happened, in the first reading, it was prophesied by the prophet, prophet Micah 700 years before it happened and it came to pass. Exactly like it was prophesied that Jesus would be born in the little town of Bethlehem, the least of all. But that is not all of the prophecy. Part of the prophecy is that Jesus will rule over all the earth. That is yet to be fully fulfilled because in some parts of the world, people are yet to acknowledge the Lordship of Jesus. But the good news here is that the part of the prophecy that have found fulfillment have been perfectly fulfilled. And so if God said it and it happened, it means that the other parts when the time arrives will happen the way God had it prophesied by the prophets. And for us as Christians, my dearly beloved in Christ, as individuals, God has promised us many things. I have no idea which aspect of his promises are yet to find fulfillment in your lives. I have no idea what you are waiting for at this moment. I have no idea the particular aspect of your prayers that is yet to be answered. But there is something I know very well. With God, he is always on time, even when it takes 700 years. And so, I pray for you as I pray for myself, that our trust in God may never put us to shame until all his promises find fulfillment in our lives through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.